One thing I found when making music is that I have to be quick and I have to keep things flowing while the idea and the inspiration's there. And one of the hard things about using a door like Logic is there's a million different ways to work. And that is what I wanna share with you in today's video. Quick, efficient way of working in Logic with the sampler to get ideas, techniques, sounds, and experimentation going really, really quickly. If you're new here, I go by the artist name of Unders, and I've been working in audio to one degree or another for 18, nearly 19 years now. Be that mastering broadcast to go out on the radio station, comms in the military, or running the sound system for a venue that hosted up to 5,000 people day in, day out. DJing, podcasts, basically if it's audio, I've been working in there in some degree. What we usually do here on this channel is I look at some of my music, what I've been working on, and what I've learned from what I've been doing. And that's what we're gonna focus on in today's video. This is the way that I've been using the sampling systems and the new stem splitting options in Logic Pro to get ideas and experimentation and new sounds flowing really, really quickly, which is helping me finish up loads more music that I'm really happy with. And when I am happy with that music, I use the channel sponsor, DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. So for example, this was all one sample, right? And we've Split the bass out, we split these parts out, uh, and then we've made this called trippy pad and this nice underlayer just from the same thing. So what I want to show you is the really quick and easy process I'm using to do that. So to prove my point, I'm just going to delete all of that. So I'm just going to start with the drum break in. That's in there basically so I've got something to listen to and reference what's going on. Doesn't have to be the end drums, but it's in there because it helps me find what I'm looking for. So drum break. Uh, just going to go into the splice folder. To make things slight, I'm just going to bash in the word soul uh, and that's going to bring up a whole stack of samples and what I want to listen for is something that's got some instrumentals, some bass uh, and maybe a bit of vocal, it depends what we're after. So I'm liking that. Um, it is SBV85 Soul Stack Studio Light, if you want to find it. So we can drag that in. The very first thing, right, you can see here, it isn't in the exact BPM. This is 85, we're at 174, so 87 would have been great, but isn't. Um, what we can just do is go to the end of the sample just here, just hold down Option, and as you can see, we can just snap that in. You can see it's going to be about four bars. <laughs> works at that BPM, we could also drag it out and try it over eight bars and see how it is. In this case, that doesn't really work, so we just Command Z, that's gonna be about four bars for us. We hit U just to loop around that section. Now, if we right click here, we can do Stem Splitter. There's no vocals or anything in this, so I'm just going to do Bass and Other and split it into those two. So now we've got those and it's muted the other one for us. Still plays back fine. Now if we solo out the bass, Cool beans, right? We've now got a bass line and we've now got a separate guitar line. Straight away, that gives us the option to have, you know, get that loop through, then drop the bass in. Got more flexibility straight away just by doing that. But we're going to take it a step further. And this right here, if we click on it and drag it over to the left, we get the option to duplicate it and drop it into a sampler. I'm just going to drop it into quick sampler and original. It's the really easy, quick way to work. And as you can see, that's auto sliced everything up for us based on the mode here, which is the transient mode. Now it's done it a little bit too harsh. If I play on my keyboard down here, I'm gonna really struggle to find something with that. Now, there's some other ways we can do this. We could switch follow tempo on, and have follow tempo, <coughs> and have follow tempo. Uh, we could take it to like beat divisions instead, bring it down to like one. That's probably gonna find some good things for us, but in this case, we've got kind of things going off beat and in and out of beat. So if we do it on transient and note, then we can kind of grab those a little easier. 
And what we do is bring the sensitivity down and it will start just finding those larger ones for us. Well, it seems to be about right. We can play through on the keyboard and grab most of the notes we're after. Just go over to the ones here where it's like doubled up and you're not really gonna get anything out of it. Use your mouse wheel, zoom in, and just double click on the one you don't want. Happy days, right? And there's another one over here. Just hover over that and get rid of you. And from there, we're pretty good. So from here, we can do things like have the bass in and just play something in on the keys. I kind of like these little three clicky notes as an extra rhythm, right? I'm just going to hit record. Alright, when you've got some kind of idea, just play around in the piano roll and tweak a bit slightly out, like a double hit here, I didn't quite like that, but... So I quite like this second section instead. So what I can do is just take it so I've got two bars, duplicate that out, and now for this. Now I feel like I need something that hits right at the start. So I'm gonna take these two together, hit T and G, uh, and glue them together to make a little four bar loop. Uh, and I feel like a starting note would kind of work, right? Something here. So maybe something like this. Now I want to play around and put a little bit of delay on this as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to swing into here, grab tape delay, really simple, like a nice sounding way to set up tape delay, bump and dry all the way back up, uh, leave feedback to around 20%, put spread to around 49, 50 kind of range, take your low cut, bring that right the way up into like the 700s, uh, flutter intensity 1%, LFO intensity 1%, uh, and then your time like dilation can be like one over four. So we've got a little melody thing going on. I'm gonna take that now and just duplicate it with Command and D. Take off the tape delay on the new one and I wanna build out some kind of like... I quite like that sound. I might make that into like its own rhythm. Really, really simple way I could do that is I can go MIDI effects here, arpeggiator. So now let's open up the sampler itself. Down here we've got our like ADSR, in this case just attack decay really. I can just Alright, and back into the arpeggiator. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of swing. That 54 is kind of nice. And let's have the velocity randomize a bit. I'm literally just going to record that in. Cool. Uh, when I'm recording, I have an issue with my latency, so I'm just going to snap that back into there and make sure it runs across the whole thing. So now we've got... Just sitting along in there like an extra bit of percussion, bring it up with the drums. All right, let's use a similar technique to make kind of a pad sound for everything to sit on there. What have we got here? So I've just made a new one again, turn the delay off. We're gonna open up the sampler. Let's find something that might work. Okay, I think that 
it's going to give us sort of what we need. So instead of having it on slice, we are going to go to one shot. Uh, the way I make sure I stay in the right location, take these and just slide them all the way along like this. And now that's going to be on C rather than whatever note it was previously. If we go into one shot, we still have to make sure follow temples on. When we go into one shot, it will now be on C2, I think it is. Now we're in one shot, it will be on C3. Have follow tempo on if you still wanted to, but it can be quite nice to slow it down here by half. Depends on what kind of sound you got, right? And what we need is we need this to loop in some way for us. So forward reverse is the only thing on playback. If we go to classic, we now get our loop options. So what we can do here is do like reverse like this. And what we do is set the loop point to be this like portion here. Now if we're getting any clicks and pops, turn your snap onto zero crossing and readjust your loop points like so. Might do it so. So having it so it reverses isn't necessarily working, but we could do alternate. Now we've got some kind of like rhythmic vibe going on, right? Filter wise, I'm going to change the filter and put it onto more of a high pass uh, and take out all the real low, low end. A bit of drive, maybe a bit of resonance. We'll see what we fancy. And we might, I'm just going to use the same delay we did before. That's given us like a really nice shuffly rhythm. Uh, I'm going to run everything though into a reverb. So we've got a space designer and we'll give it like a small-ish room. They are up here, aren't they? Uh, medium hall, something like that. Now we might be able to slow it down. I don't want that to happen when it triggers either. So we're going to have to put an attack in. Let's, uh, let's have a go with that. quiet on the velocity so let's jack that up a bit let's make sure it starts right on point so we'll just quantize one to one higher on the velocity, so it's a bit louder. And in sampler, I'm going to just snip that off in the end, like this. Chroma Glow here on the bass. Just have that cut through a bit. Right there guys 
and that right there guys is the way that I'm really enjoying using the stem splitter just dragging things out drop it into sampler and just getting ideas and creativity like snapping going really really quickly I really hope it's been helpful for you thank you very much for watching and uh, if you have any questions please do throw it in the comments down below I do look forward to seeing you in future videos as well take care